Welcome back to YouTube. I have a minute again from in-depth tech reviews. And in today's video, I have a question for you. Do you think Google phones have more bugs compared to other Android OEMs? If that's true, I think Google has a problem here. Because it doesn't make any sense to be the owners of the hardware and software, and your phones have more software issues. In this video, I will go through each and every problem I've been experiencing with every Pixel phone I have, not only the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, for Google to work on them in the upcoming software updates. Dear Google, here are all the software issues we've been experiencing for a very long time, so please work on them. I will start with the phone app. And the first problem I have is in the search. Let's say I want to close it using the back gesture. In this case, the whole app quits instead. However, if I used the arrow at the top left corner, it goes back to the main page as expected. So I'm not sure why the back gesture acts differently in this scenario. The second problem I have is in the keypad. Tapping on the button takes about two to three seconds for the keypad to show up, which is weird for a simple task like this to take that long. And I do face the same problem with Google Messages when I start a new chat. As you see, it took more than three seconds for the contacts to show up on the screen. Another problem I have with the phone app, if I receive the call while the phone is locked, there is no way to dismiss the notification and use the phone normally. But instead, I have to wait for the call to end to be able to use my phone. Another problem I have with the call notification, if I have the phone in my pocket like this, when I take it out, I usually touch this area with my thumb. So I accidentally answer or decline phone calls by mistake. So I think it will be a better idea to make the gesture towards the sides instead of being towards the top and the bottom. Now let's talk about the issues I have with the camera and the first one is only related to the 6 Pro. So let me show you a screen recording while pointing the camera towards a light source. And once I open the camera app, as you see, there are some weird lines in the viewfinder. And when I take the shot, these weird lines will show up. The only way to overcome this issue is to wait for the camera to adjust the shutter speed before taking the shot and it takes between 2 to 3 seconds, which is not ideal if you want to take a quick photo. I tried the same thing on my Pixel 5 and here's another screen recording and as you see I pointed the phone towards the same light source and once I opened the camera app everything is normal without any issues. The second problem I have is in deleting photos, so let me try to delete some of the photos I have. As you see, it deleted the first two photos without any issues, but when I try to delete the third one, it doesn't allow me and I have to wait for some time until it responds and it keeps happening over and over again. The third problem is the videos recorded using any Pixel phone always come out grainy, especially at night. And that happens because the ISO is always higher than what it should be. But thankfully you can overcome this problem by decreasing the brightness until all the noise disappears but unfortunately, the lighting condition keeps it changing all the time while recording videos, so it's not ideal to keep adjusting the brightness yourself. So I hope to see Google giving the priority to this issue and fix it as soon as possible because every Pixel user has this problem for years. Number four, the distorted images. Sometimes when I take a photo and try to view it from the camera app, it comes out very distorted and the only way to overcome this problem is to close the photo and open it again. I'm not able to show you this problem on camera, but I'm sure if you are a Pixel user, you should have experienced this issue for many times now. Number five is not a problem, but it's a suggestion. Now we have more than one slider to adjust the highlights, the shadows, and the white balance. So I hope Google will allow us to save these adjustments into a profile that we can reuse every time we open the camera app and instead of readjusting everything from scratch. And now it's time for today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by cdkeyoffers.com. It's an online digital store that sells original Windows 10 and Office keys in a very discounted price. Not only this, but you can use my special promo code ID20 to get extra 25% discount instead of the regular 20%. As you see, you can get a Windows 10 OEM key for $15.18, which is insanely cheap. And if you are interested in Microsoft Office Professional Plus, you can get it for $44 after discount using the same promo code ID20. Please check the links in the description below and now let's get back to the review. Next, Google Maps. And this is one of the things I keep talking about over and over again. If you have the assistant driving activated, when you swipe up to go home, the phone takes some time to switch to the picture-in-picture -picture view, which is not expected from a flagship phone. This problem exists in every Pixel phone I have. Even the 6 Pro with the flagship processor still struggles to switch between the two views. So the issue seems to be related to the app itself or the OS. 
Now let's talk about the UI issues we have for a very long time and the most annoying one is the black bar at the bottom of the screen that appears with most third-party apps and you can also see it in Google Chrome but it has a white color. What's more annoying in Google Chrome when you play a video in full screen like this the white bar appears at the bottom of the screen and it looks really bad. The second UI issue we have is the inconsistent keyboard sliding animation. So for example, when you open Google Messages, you will see a nice animation that slides from the bottom of the screen towards the top. But when you try other native apps like for example, YouTube Music, as you see the animation is much worse. And even third-party apps like WhatsApp for example, still doesn't implement the same smooth animation so I hope to see more consistency in this part. I also spotted another inconsistency in the widgets. So for example when you tap and hold on Google Photos widget you won't find an edit button to change its shape. However when you do the same for the clock you will see an edit button so I'm not sure why Google Photos widget is left out. And finally if I have the do not disturb activated and I'm using the quick phrases feature you will not see the call notification but you can still see the bubble of the quick phrases on the screen. Now let's talk about three more issues related only to the Pixel 6 series and the first one is the mobile network usage. My phone is still exceeding the 20% mark even after installing January update for more than a week now. This issue has been there for more than three months now and Google didn't fix it just yet so I started to believe it's a hardware issue. Number two, the fingerprint still doesn't work properly under direct sunlight. So it seems like this is another hardware problem with this phone that we have to live with. And finally the adaptive brightness. Still the ambient light sensor on the back does some weird stuff but after installing January update it feels slightly better and I hope to see more improvements in the future. So I will end this video by talking about a couple of things that annoys me the most and I'm not sure why Google decided to do them that way. Number one, why a 5G phone doesn't get 5G signal in a country with 5G coverage and the band is supported. So for example, if you are using a Pixel phone with 5G support, you will only get 4G signal in a country like the UAE. And it seems like Google blocked 5G for more countries without any apparent reason and the same applies to the voice over LTE feature. So I'm not sure what's different about Google phones when it comes to those two features specifically. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the issues I've been experiencing with every Pixel phone I had. I hope they make sense to you and please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And I hope this video will find its way to someone at Google that can really make a difference and start working on these issues. So I hope you like my video and if you do please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.